have like all day dining over here, coffee, afternoon tea, and then we have cocktails at night. Actually in the day as well. If you you know love to drink in the day, we have cocktails in the day. Luther by Park 90. So they are actually a wine partner that we have in collaboration here. They bring in hundreds of wine labels from um, the old world, new world, but mostly from the Italy region. So if you are a fan of wine, like good quality wine, they do their wines very well. And they're only here at night from evening onwards. So if you were to come in like maybe from seven, we'll see a few people who are in suits and jackets. That's a lot different from our regular stuff. They are the Tanuka people. So they are the sommeliers. They will go around advising you what bottles will be good for you depending on what you're into that day. Yeah. So, so it's it's basically a lounge for everybody and for every occasion. Like whatever you want to have, we have it here. Hi, uh, I'm Dora. I'm the mixologist of the Lobby Lounge here in Intercontinental Hotel. So as you can see, we do have our uh, cocktail menu. It's a journey. It's inspired by the, uh, the neighborhood around the hotel. So we do have five chapters. Sultan Gate Garden. So we do have a night, daytime and nighttime cocktail. We have the Arab Street. We also have the Sajalane. We do have the Albert, Albert Food Center and the Intercontinental Singapore itself. So first we'll be making a Royal Rosales representing the Sultan Gate Garden. So here. So Royal Rosales uh, inside is a Nardini, Nardini bitter, Cairo gin. I made a cordial out of uh, grapefruit and pink pepper and strawberry. It has lemon and uh, absinthe also. This is actually the daytime cocktail. So in the cocktail menu that we have created, there is a daytime and nighttime uh, drinks. So for the guests to choose also, it depends on the mood of the, the guest, whether they want some like more lighter drink or more refreshing during the daytime.
and we're gonna add some more uh, some pink, pink pepper corn. The next uh, cocktail, this is actually um, it's a clarified cocktail. So it's a milk wash. So I've already do the batch. So inside is um, spice rum, uh, Chalung Bay spice rum, uh, Ceylon Arak infused uh, uh, with kaffir lime, and then orange clove chamomile cordial. So I prepared everything already here. So we just need to do the stirring. Most of the drinks with citrus, uh, with citrus, with eggs, it has to be shaken. But if, if it's made of like all liquors and spirits, it can just be stirred. Yeah. But this one has citrus, but it's already milk wash. So no need to shake. So it's a dehydrated uh, lemon twist with a fresh flower. It, repre uh, it represents Arab street. Uh, Arab street a uh, long time ago um, it's like a street like there's a lot of stalls and uh, there's also flower shops in Arab street. Yeah. So we are now on the third chapter of your cocktail journey. So we're gonna making uh, gonna be making spice lane old-fashioned. So we use Norris from and we have the ginger star anise cookout. little bit of dash of uh, aromatic bitters And we're just gonna perfume it with oranges. is too big actually make it a little bit smaller so it will go all the way down a little bit higher than the glass so what i do is do like this so we are now at the fourth chapter of the cocktail journey representing the albert food center 
So this is actually a clarified or milk wash cocktail also. So it's a gin, pandan, and gula melaka. So basically, it's like a chendol dessert uh, turns into a cocktail. So this is like a dessert cocktail. Uh, our cocktail list is actually really not really good because we have created depends on the like some guests would like um bolder flavor, they want a fizzy drinks, they want more to fruity cocktails, so they have choices. Uh, me, I can drink uh, different cocktails, depends on my mood. Today maybe I'm in a good mood, I wanna have a fizzy drink. But maybe later I want to have a bolder flavor cocktails. Then tomorrow is another th different preference, different people. Depends on the day, depends on the timing also. Since we created this cocktail, we only hear all the good things about this cocktail. That most of, a lot of the guests like the cocktail actually. All right, so we are not the last chapter representing intercontinental Singapore itself. So we're going to be making a French 75 style cocktail. It's called Legacy 80. 80 because we are at the 80 Middle Road. The hotel itself is located at 80 Middle Road. We're using Bobby's cream. Vermouth that we have infused in blue pea. Unlike the classic uh, French 75, they're using lemon. But we're not gonna be using lemon. We're using a tamarind cordial instead. And two dashes, oops, two dashes <laughs> of orange bitters. Champagne perfume with lemon zest. Garnish with the lemon zest also. So I moved to Australia in 1992, which, uh, we migrated to Australia, and uh, that's where I picked up my culinary skill. So I was trained in the uh, Sheraton on the Park, which is now under the Marriott Groups. Um, then I went to Western Hotels, and then I went down to Melbourne, the Windsor Hotel, which along is a five-star hotel, which uh, from uh, Windsor Hotel. After that, I moved to Singapore, which is uh, the Raffles Hotel. So all this was, um, I met my, my wife back then. So I met my wife at the first hotel I started off as a trainee. So we, from there, I just moved on where, where she moves, I moved. Um, so she went to Melbourne. It took me a year to move down to Melbourne. 
Then uh, after that, she went to Macau. And then by the time I decided to Macau, go to Macau, she said, let's go back home to Singapore. So I moved to Singapore instead. It is very different uh, to Australia because here the culture is the food. When it comes to food, it's more diverse because you've got all the cultures that's combined. And plus, this is a tourist hub. Singapore is a tourist hub, so you get food from everywhere. So, because here the lobby lounge, we focus on the Peranakan food because you see as our design on all our uniform and all that, it's more focused on the local uh, and mixes well with the Western. So here in our menu itself, we have a uh, Western plus the local uh, uh, favorites. Actually, I was lucky because my wife is Peranakan, her, mainly her grandmother and um, yes, from her side of the family. So my side of the family has no, but because um, when I came here to Singapore about 10 years, so we would go to the grandmother's place and eat. So the grandmother would normally cook with the helpers and everything. So she would not be involved in the kitchen as in physically, but she would know I want like this. I said she would train the helpers to cook the, the thing that she likes. So yeah, that was really helpful. And plus, uh, I had a few issues when I first come over. There's a certain way that they eat, like uh, for laksa, ipo laksa. Uh, no, sorry, katong laksa, which you only eat with a spoon. It's supposed it's noodle. It's a noodle, we, uh, and then it's only meant to eat with a spoon. So when I first come in, to me, it's noodle, chopstick. I ask for a chopstick and they, like the shopkeeper, the, the server, like not scold me when they say, no, we don't have chopsticks here. We only eat with spoon. And I question back, how do you eat noodles? And then they just, just take the spoon and you go over there and you see. Then my wife tell me, no, here, katong laksa, because they cut the noodle itself. I had to, I wanted to present the laksa dish that we serve here in the, in the Long Island to promote um, what we sell here itself as you see in the lobby lounge is uh, our main selling dish most likely mo mostly is uh, laksa, hokkien mee, a lot of the local dishes. Our western food here we do move but not as much as the local dishes. Let's say for me the local food here the most important piece of equipment is the wok because you need to fry in high heat high temperature so when it comes to local food you must have a wok. If you don't have a wok you cannot uh, replicate the dish itself. And most of the dishes here that we serve here is you can find it in the hawker store, which is like a food court, local food court, or you find it near the wet market, the, the market. So, yes, we need that wok with a high heat, otherwise you don't get the wok hay. Here we call it wok hay, or we call it the, 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 the flavor of the wok when you um, toss the noodle. One of the dish, which is actually a crab slider. So this chef is uh, assisting with the plating. So as you know, chili crab uh, is actually one of the Singapore very renowned local dish. And so uh, Chef Charles, would you like to speak a little bit about the dish? So you okay. have created this rendition of chili crab in a slider, right? Yeah, so chili crab, uh, uh, Singapore chili crab pretty much is you eat it with sauce and the mantel, the bread itself, they deep fry. And um, you will eat with your hands and gloves and then you eat with the bread that dip in the sauce. So here I take another take on it, another version of it. We still have the crab with the sauce and everything, but we put it into a slider itself. Here in the kitchen, we have two sides. The cold side, which prepare the starter. <clears throat> and then you got the main course on this side here. So here, the, our precious equipment would be the wok here, which the, my assistant is working on right now. That is very important to make local dishes. So the wok in this kitchen is very important. So he's preparing your dish right now as we speak. So we're doing the Alaskan king crab hokkien mee. Excuse the mask here, because in the kitchen we have to. <clears throat> Have 
the main chef who trains uh, the junior staff. So he in the kitchen at the moment. He's a um, what do you call it? Uh, senior. Senior. So he will train the, all the other staff. So now they're getting the ingredients together. Then he will be cooking, and then as time slowly they will train. When it gets more busy, like lunch time or dinner time, we have two chefs now. So right now in the morning it's very quiet. So the team is bare. But when it gets to more in the evening, uh, where it's more busy, we get more busy. So my restaurant, because I take care of the room service also, so it's 24 hour. <clears throat> so we have 12, plus a few part time in the breakfast. So, but main, our main crew is uh, 12. So we have a Chinese wedding, which is taken care of by the Chinese uh, restaurant uh, or the Chinese team that do mainly for that. And then we have a, <clears throat> a wedding, who's, uh, bank, which is our banquet team, take care of all the banquet event meetings, uh, outside catering. Uh, so right here is our uh, Alaskan King Crab Hokkien Mee, which is um, more of the premium version. We have two. Um, we just launched this recently. It's due to the feedback that they love the Hokkien Mee, so we want to do something more premium for the guests who love seafood. So the dish itself has already, the normal dish itself has uh, seafood already, but we were just gonna have more, well, because Singapore, they love seafood. Too. And this is the laksa that we sell here in the lobby lounge. Chili crab slider. If you come here by yourself, eat one main course, that's full already. But if uh, it, it's more like socializing, sharing. So hence we got like um, in the evening more of the beer uh, beer and wine friendly dishes that we get sell often. So even the plot bowl itself is more Puranican um, uh, because here we're in the Puranican setting of the lobby lounge. Mm -hmm.